Hi, I'm Sarah Savour, and this talk is on our work called Robust Nerf. As we know, Nerf is great at multi view 3D reconstruction from a sparse set of 2D images. So, given a set of images, methods like MIPNERF360 can perfectly render the scene from all new viewpoints. But if you are given bad images, you get bad results. Right now, if you have transient objects, such as this randomly placed pink balloon, the rendering will be crowded with shadowy clouds and floater artifacts. As a solution to clean up the rendering and ignore the transient objects and distractors, we propose robust nerf. Let me show you the two side by side. We approach this problem via the lens of robust optimization. Robust nerf optimizes the nerf model under a specially curated robust loss. Our poster is on Thursday, and we look forward to talk to you. Brief introduction of our work to solve photorealistic scene stylization. The task aims to transfer the style of a reference image into 3D scene while making the results still like camera shoots. To achieve this, the most straightforward way is to stylize each view with a 2D photorealistic cell transfer approach. However, this might result in noise, disharmony, and even inconsistency across views. In theory, we prove that when transforming the print nerve with Lipschitz mapping, the consistency and the photorealism across source views will be encoded into the synthesis. In technique, we propose LibRF to transform reference field with the Lipschitz network for this task. Such a way completely eliminates the drawbacks of a 2D PSD method. In technique, Hi everyone, my name is Marco Toski from Icon AI, and I'm here to share our project Relight My Nerve, a dataset for novel view synthesis and relighting of real world objects. Traditionally, NERF has been widely used for novel view synthesis, allowing us to generate realistic images from novel viewpoints. However, one limitation of the standard NERF approach is the lack of relighting capabilities, which restricts its potential applications. We embarked on a cast to explore if there is a simple way to train a NERF architecture that not only performs novel view synthesis, but also supports relighting of a scene. We then collected a specific dataset called René Relighting Nerf, obtained through the coordinated movements of two robotic arms, one holding a point light and the other a camera. Moving forward in this presentation, we will analyze and discuss the results obtained with the proposed baseline. Hello, I'm Yuan Dai. Here we introduce our paper Nighttime Smartphone Reflective Flare Removal Using Optical Center Symmetry Prior Reflective flare is a phenomenon that occurs when light reflects inside the lenses, causing bright spots or a ghosting effect in photos. Existing reflective flare removal methods rely on manually designed features to detect these flares of the sun, which are always round bright spots. However, these methods often fail to identify reflective flares created by various types of artificial light sources in nighttime situation. In this paper, we introduce a new dataset named Bracket Flare and an end-to-end -end learning-based pipeline for reflective flare removal in nighttime situations. We present 3D Highlighter, localizing regions on 3D shapes via text descriptions. Where would you put a necklace on a horse? How about headlights on a UFO or shoes on an alien? More generally, can we localize arbitrary text-specified regions on 3D shapes? In this work, we present a method to do exactly this. 3D Highlighter localizes semantic regions on a shape using text as input. Our technique reasons about where to place seemingly unrelated concepts in semantically meaningful locations on the 3D shape. For example, our method can hallucinate how to place a poncho on a horse or headphones on a bunny. Please see our project page for more information. Our work is motivated by the importance of semantic region localization for 3D modeling and editing as many of these tasks need to be applied locally.
Kinship phase synthesis aims to synthesize descendants' faces based on the parents' appearance. This technology has many potential applications, such as kinship verification, finding long-lost children, and multimedia social applications. In this paper, we introduce StyleGene, a new framework for kinship face synthesis. StyleGene allows us to generate a variety of realistic descendant faces by leveraging the visual traits inherited from their parents. One notable advantage is that StyleGene's training process doesn't depend on kinship annotation. During training, we extract individual facial genes for each facial region. In the inference stage, we generate the descendants' genes by simulating the genetic processes of crossover and mutation. We then decode the genes to synthesize their facial images. We propose a novel 3D GAN framework for unsupervised learning of generative, high-quality and 3D consistent facial avatars from unstructured 2D images. To achieve both the accuracy of deformation and the flexibility of topology, we first utilize 2D generative network, StyleGAN 2, to generate a high-quality neural texture. This texture is then projected onto three mutually orthogonal planes using face geometry templates through rasterization. Considering that the face templates do not model the interior of the mouth, we have designed a style modulated unit to extract the features of the outer contour of the mouth and infer the internal details of the oral cavity. Furthermore, we have developed a static triplane structure to represent the outer face. Two sets of triplanes are spatially fused based on a mask, followed by standard neural volume rendering and a 2D super resolution network. We present flow supervision for deformable nerf a method focused on synthesizing novel view images for dynamic scenes from monocular videos. Our approach enhances the state-of-the-art deformable neural radiance field by incorporating optical flow supervision. By leveraging optical flow, which provides direct supervision for motion and structure, we achieve significant improvements in monocular novel view synthesis compared to a baseline without flow supervision. Our method produces superior depth maps, view synthesis results, and effectively separates moving objects from the static background. Our key contribution is a generic method to synthesize optical flow directly from deformable NERF, which is mathematically accurate, ad hoc, without additional modules, and applicable to various deformation representations. By incorporating this flow supervision, we achieve superior view synthesis results compared to recent state of the art methods like NERFIS, HyperNERF, and Neural Scene Flow. Hi everyone, my name is Tan Zhao from the School of Artificial Intelligence at the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences. I'm also affiliated with the Institute of Automation Chinese Academy of Sciences. It is my pleasure to present our work titled Smokelet, Leveraging Camera Pose for Self-Supervised Molecular Optic Pose Estimation. The objective of our research is to train an object pose estimator in a self-supervised manner, eliminating the need for annotated real data during the training phase. To achieve this, we propose a relative pose constraint that leverages corresponding camera pose to geometrically restrict the optical poses. Unlike optical poses, camera poses for a set of multi-view images can be easily obtained using methods such as structure from motion. We propose AutoRecon, a fully automated pipeline for 3D object discovery and reconstruction. AutoRecon achieves background-free object reconstruction without manual annotation. Current object reconstruction methods are still not fully automated. Users need to manually annotate the region of interest to be reconstructed and perform background removal after reconstruction. Moreover, Existing object segmentation techniques still produce noisy object masks. In this work, we propose a course-defined framework for the fully automated 3D object reconstruction. The foreground object is firstly localized and decomposed from the structure from motion point cloud. Then we reconstruct a background-free object model with decomposed neural scene representations. Here are course decomposition and background-free reconstruction results of AutoRecon on the blended MVS dataset and more results on the CO3D dataset. Hi, this is Shao Hui Liu from ETH Zurich. 
Today I'm going to present our CVPR project 3D line mapping revisited. In this project, we present a robust and scalable pipeline for mapping 3D lines from multi-view post images. We improve over all stages of line mapping, resulting in high-quality 3D line maps with trigger associations. The system can also utilize the 3D 2D correspondences from the point maps to further improve the mapping quality. Here shows some examples of the produced 3D line maps from our system. The pipeline is robust and scalable, such that it can work reasonably well on in the wild multi view image collections or videos. The availability of the good quality 3D line maps also opens up new possibilities to multiple applications, including hybrid localization, bundle adjustments, and line assisted multi view stereo. The full package is open source with modular components and Python bindings. Hello. I am Zichin Wang from Beihang University. I am here to present our work, VLSAT, Visual Linguistic Semantics Assisted Training for 3D Semantic Scene Graph Prediction in Point Cloud, on CVPR 2023. Our method employs a training strategy that effectively utilizes multimodal inputs, including 2D visual features, 3D features, and linguistic features. The Oracle model we build during training addresses the issue of sparse point clouds in object data. Notably, our approach updates the 3D model implicitly via gradient backpropagation, leading to substantial improvements during inference without the need for additional information. Figure B illustrates that VLSAT only uses 3D point clouds during inference despite leveraging multimodal inputs during training. Hello everyone, my name is Lee, and I'm delighted to introduce our paper titled Optimum Transport Minimization, called Localization of Density Maps for Semi-Supervised Counting. In our paper, we present an algorithm called Optimum Transport Minimization for, for locating individuals based on density maps. This algorithm aims to bridge the gap by leveraging density maps to facilitate precise localization within crowded scenes. To showcase the practicality of density map-based localization, we employ OTM algorithm in the context of Simon supervised counting by incorporating it into a teacher-student framework. Besides, our confidence-weighted general life loss is introduced to reduce the influence of noisy pseudo labels and enhance the robustness. OTM converts density map to point map by minimizing the intra-optimal transport cost between soft labels and hard labels. Hi, we are here to introduce LaserMix, a framework for semi-supervised LiDAR semantic segmentation. LaserMix is a data-efficient learning framework designed for LiDAR segmentation. It leverages the spatial prior in driving scenes for data-efficient learning. It constructs low variational areas while laser beam mixing. It encourages the model to make confident and consistent predictions before and after mixing. It achieves competitive results over full supervision counterparts with two times to five times fever annotations. Our framework can achieve promising results under a limited annotation budget and is robust across different kinds of point clouds collected by different LiDAR sensors. The 3D perception using LiDAR point clouds establishes Hi everyone, I'm Fu Chen Long from Hydrin. AI. I'm glad to introduce our work, Point Clustering, Unsupervised Point Cloud Pre-Training Using Transformation Environments in Clustering. We first go through an overview of our proposal, the new learning paradigm for the unsupervised point cloud pre-training. As we all know, previous unsupervised point cloud pre-training can be grouped into two dimensions, contrastive learning and reconstruction. The former emphasizes the point of seeing discrimination across different views, and the later formulates the pretext of the task as shape completion. Unlike this existing pattern, we try to leverage the clustering to learn point features. We iteratively optimize feature clusters and backbone under the feature invariance at two levels, the point level and the instance level. Our proposal is architecture agnostic and ready applicable to different point call backbones. Welcome to our paper, ProfNet, 
efficient agent-centric motion forecasting with anchor-informed proposals. Motion forecasting in autonomous driving is quite challenging. We present ProfNet involves uniform encoding of heterogeneous input to construct agent-centric scene representation, ACSR, generating proposals and anchors to form anchor-informed proposals, AIP, and feeding AIP into hydro prediction heads to produce the multimodule output trajectories. We hope this work would encourage more research toward practical model design with not only high prediction accuracy, but also succinct architecture and efficient inference. In this figure, ProfNet outperformed the We present NEMO, 3D neural motion fields from multiple video instances of the same action. I'm Jackson Wong from Stanford University. For code and data, please visit our project website. Our work starts with the following insight. We have collected an abundance of human motion data in the form of videos, like video data sets in the research community, or simply videos on the internet. So, why don't we use them as a source and turn them into 3D human motion data? Our work focuses on the formulation where the input is a set of videos of the same action. As shown on the bottom left, these can be different repetitions of the same motion. Our goal is to develop a method that can leverage the shared information across the different videos to reconstruct more accurate 3D human motion data. Hello everyone. My name is Etienne Lenier, and today I'm presenting our work, Unsupervised Space-Time Network for Temporally Consistent Segmentation of Multiple Motions, done during my PhD at INRIA. This work aims to perform unsupervised motion segmentation in subsequences using a 3D convolutional network. The main idea of our work is to segment a small video volume instead of one frame, as done in previous work. This aims to improve the segmentation as we can distinguish between motions that look similar but diverge in the short term. Also, it allows us to output coherent motion labels within the sequence. Our network takes a subvolume of optical fields as input and returns a segmentation volume with consistent labels for each class. This segmentation is then evaluated as a whole, both in terms of its fidelity to the input flow field and its temporal consistency. For the data term. Hello everyone, today we present Sync Composer Any Level Semantic Image Synthesis. Please visit the project website at this link for more information or come to our post session on Thursday afternoon. In this work, we develop a model that can generate images from semantic information of different levels, ranging from a pure text to layout maps containing shapes of different precisions, from coarse blobs to a more detailed object mask. The level of detail is controlled by a variable called precision level. The input becomes equivalent to a text when the precision level is set to zero and becomes a segmentation map when the precision level is set to the highest value. By changing the precision level, we can control how tightly the gen- Hello everyone, my name is Nathaniel Rees. Today I'm going to present our work, DreamBooth, fine-tuning text image diffusion models for subject-driven generation. This is work that was done along my collaborators at Google while I was a PhD student at Boston University. Using DreamBooth, one can generate new images of a specific subject, such as this dog, in different contexts and with different semantic modifications, given only a small number of unconstrained input images. Here we have a summary of the method. Given a small set of three to five input images, we first generate a unique rare identifier for the subject, V in this case, and subsequently fine-tune a pre-trained text image model on the small set of images using the subject's class name and the rare identifier as text supervision. At inference time, we can use sentences such as a V dog in the beach to generate new images of our specified subject in new contexts and with semantic modifications. The problem we seek to address is that
Hi, my name is Meng Qi Huang, currently a PhD student at the University of Science and Technology of China. Today, I will introduce our CVPI to highlight paper, which is titled as Towards Accurate Image Coding, Improved Autoregressive Image Generation with Dynamic Factor Quantization. In this paper, we focus on the popular factor quantization based autoregressive models whose key problem lies in encoding image regions into discrete codes. Existing methods all adopt fixed lens coding that encode fixed size image regions into fixed lens codes, which is insufficient in important regions or redundant in unimportant ones. We propose fiber lens coding that encode image regions according to their different information densities to achieve an accurate and compact code representation. Hi everyone, it's great pleasure to have this opportunity to present our work, Disco Clip, a distributed contrastive loss for memory fiction con uh, clip training. Uh, this is joint work between Yi Hao Chen, Xian Biao Qi, Jia Nan Wang, and Lei Zhang. I am Xian Biao Qi. We are from International Digital Economic Academic Idea. Uh, the motto of idea is the world needs a few good ideas. Okay. Uh, first, let me highlight the contributions of all this, uh, this paper. In this paper, we proposed a disco clip, a free launch improvement to the original clip. A uh, disco clip can reduce the uh, uh, GPU memory cost and also reduce the computational uh, cost. And mathematically, distributed, distributed contrastive loss is equivalent to the original contrast. Existing video language embeddings match clips with its text description. We propose to use hierarchical long-term videos with its summary text to capture both what is happening and why is it happening. The availability of summary annotations in recent datasets in our novel hierarchical setup enables this embedding learning. Summary are descriptive texts telling the high-level intent, whereas narrations are text sentences describing the current action. Our proposed pre-training improves both long-term and short-term representations as seen in its downstream task performance in both zero-shot and fine-tuned settings on Ego4D, Shared Ego, How to Honor a Million, and Epic Kitchens. The visualizations also show the desired hierarchy between long-term and short-term features. Overall, our work goes beyond capturing what the person is doing now by additionally capturing what the person aims to do. Hello everyone, this is our new work, CVT SLR, Contrastive Facial Texture Transformation for Sign Language Recognition with Variational Alignment. Sign Language Recognition, or SLR for short, is a weekly supervised task that annotates sign videos into texture glosses. However, in the patient training caused by the lack of large-scale available sign datasets, therefore we propose a novel SLR framework to fully explore the pre-trained knowledge of both the facial and the language modalities. Meanwhile, a contrastive cross-model alignment algorithm is designed. Extensive experiments have demonstrated the superiority of the proposed CVT SLR. It's our pleasure to present our highlight study in CVPR 2023, Being Comes From Not Being, Open Vocabulary Text to Motion Generation with Wordless Training. In this work, we propose a novel offline open vocabulary human motion generation method, abbreviated as OOHMG. As the name indicates, our method does not require online fine-tuning or matching to handle unseen texts in real time. And by learning in a zero-shot manner, our method can generate poses or motions for any type of text. Different from most of text-driven generation, our method generates human motion based on a realistic and cross-platform 3D human model, simple, which makes the generated content editable and visually plausible. Briefly, our method includes a generalized text-to-pose generator that can generate text-consistent poses. And the predicted poses are used to prompt the pre-trained motion generator to synthesize a complete motion. The key ingredients include text-pose alignment, TPA, a differentiable and effective alignment model for 3D poses and texts, wordless training, a training framework that optimizes the pose generator with random text features, which generalizes the pose generator to handle unseen real-world texts. And a pose prompt motion generator, the motion generator that can synthesize a complete motion from given text-consistent poses.
Hello everyone, I am Yi Hao Liu. It is a pleasure to share our CVPR highlight paper to you. Our work is entitled Dagi, a new brain training paradigm for low level vision. Recently, self supervised brain training has achieved remarkable success in high level vision, but its application in low level vision remains ambiguous and not well established. What is the primitive intention of brain training? What is the core problem of pre-training in low-level vision? In this paper, we aim to answer these essential questions and establish a new pre-training scheme for low-level vision. To learn a general low-level vision representation that can improve the performance of various tasks, we propose a new pre-training paradigm called Degradation Autoencoder, DAGAE. DAGAE follows the philosophy of designing pre Hello everyone, I'm Feng Yilin from Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications. I'd like to introduce our paper, Zero Shot Everything Sketch Based Image Retrieval and an Explainable Style. This paper studies the problem of zero shot sketch based image retrieval, also called zero shot SBIR. However, with two significant differentiators to prior art. Firstly, we tackle all variants of zero shot SBIR including intercategory, intracategory, and cross-dataset retrieval using just one network. We call this everything. Moreover, we would really like to understand how this sketch photo matching operates. We call this explainable. Technically, a transformer-based cross-model network was proposed with three specific designs to tailor to the problem. Hello, in this presentation, I will introduce a novel cross-motor retrieval method that embeds data to a set of embedding vectors. The objective of our paper is to tackle the task of cross-motor retrieval, which involves searching for data when the query and database have different modalities. In particular, we focus on the scenario when they are images and text. However, this task is recognized for inherent ambiguity problem due to the polysemy exhibited by images and text. To address this issue, we propose the idea of embedding the data into a set of diverse embedding vectors. Within the embedding set, each element captures the diverse and ambiguous semantic inherent in the data. For the effective set-based embedding, we propose slow attention-based set prediction module and a noble set similarity function named smooth chamfer similarity. As a result, the pro Welcome to our presentation of the paper, GRES, Generalized Referring Expression Segmentation. I am Lu Chang from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. To begin, I'll provide an overview of our work. Our work is based on a fundamental multimodal task, Referring Expression Segmentation, RES. For classic RES, one of its limitations is that it supports single-target expressions only leaving multi-target and no-target expressions unconsidered. This reduces the applicability of existing models in practical scenarios. From this point, we introduce a new benchmark, called Generalized Referring Expression Segmentation, GRES, which expands classic res by allowing expressions to refer to an arbitrary number of target objects. To facilitate this, we create a GRES dataset, named GREF-COCO, and further propose a baseline method, which achieves state-of-the-art performance on for both GRES and Classic RES. Hello everyone, thanks for your watching this video. My name is Bo Hao Pong. It is a great honor for me to give this presentation to introduce our work, Hierarchical Dense Correlation Distillation for Field Segmentation. We first gave a concise overview of our method. We solve the challenges of field segmentation using a novel framework. Our method employs decoupled downsampling and matching, enabling effective information extraction and semantic correspondence mapping. The matching module, based on correlation and distillation, refines the future maps. With this hierarchical approach, we transfer semantic correspondence from coarse to fine graded levels. Our method achieves impressive results, including a 50 points MIOU on the COCO dataset, 
in the one shot setting. More visualization results also show. Welcome to our presentation on box level active detection, which aims to improve object detection efficiency via active learning. We first review the pitfalls of image level evaluation and propose a realistic and fair box level evaluation criterion. We then advocate a box level protocol that prioritizes top ranked targets for annotation, and meanwhile discuss well learned counterparts to avoid label waste and redundancy. Under the proposed box level setting, we devise a novel pipeline, namely complementary pseudo active strategy, that is Compass. It exploits both human annotations and the model intelligence in a complementary fashion. An efficient input and committee queries labels for informative objects only. Meanwhile, well learned counterparts are identified by the model and compensated with pseudo labels. We implemented more than 10 active detection baselines and SOTAS in a unified code base, and Compass consistently outperforms competitors under four settings. Real world medical image segmentation is a challenging task, particularly for tail conditions associated with rare diseases. We propose Max Query for out of distribution localization in this task. We adopt object queries in mask transformers to formulate segmentation as a soft cluster assignment. During training, the queries fit the feature level cluster centers of inliers, allowing the similarity between pixels and queries to localize OOD regions during inference. We propose a query distribution loss to enforce clear boundaries among segmentation targets at the query level, which improves both inlayer segmentation and OOD indication. Our framework is tested on real-world pancreatic and liver tumor segmentation and outperforms previous state-of-the-art algorithms. Real-world. Hello and welcome to the video about the paper titled On the Effects of self Situation and Contrast Alignment in Deep Multiview Clustering. So, what we see in current multiview clustering is that there are many new approaches being presented, especially with self supervision based components for representation learning. Uh, one of these is contrast alignment. Uh, however, we find that there is a lack of direction and consistent advancements in the field, uh, which makes it difficult to conduct future research. In the paper, we prove that contrastive alignment is harmful to cluster separability as the number of views increases. We also present the deep MEC framework with an open source implementations and, and six new instances. Finally, we conduct an extensive experimental evaluation. So the main findings is that our new instances present state-of-the-art performance and that contrastive alignment works well with few views, but not with many views. This is in line with our theoretical findings. Hi, I'm Michael. There's a common saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. In dogs, humans, and other animals, what's learned early in development is very difficult to alter in a phenomenon that's known as a critical learning period. What about artificial neural networks? Are they similarly sensitive to the early phases of training? To investigate this, in a similar spirit to pioneering experiments done by Hubel and Weasel on kittens, we performed developmental studies on artificial neural networks. In particular, we considered the case of multisensory integration and the case where for initial phase of training, one pathway had normal images and the other one had deprived or less informative images. To do this, we, can, we took two crops of images, so a left and a right half of The contributions of this work are twofold. Firstly, we propose a novel deep graph reprogramming scheme. The goal of deep graph reprogramming is to reprogram a pre trained graph neural network without amending node features nor model parameters to tackle various downstream tasks without the need for retraining nor fine tuning. The figure presented below shows the proposed deep graph reprogramming scheme. Our second contribution involves the development of a series of data reprogramming and model reprogramming methods. The proposed methods paradoxically turn the role of adversarial reprogramming attack that is conventionally treated as attacks to learning systems into guards that repurpose a pre-trained model to perform the intended downstream tasks. The figure below illustrates the proposed methods with node-level perturbation, 
edge level perturbation, and structure level perturbation. Hello, I'm Jishnam Koti, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about our paper, Deep Deterministic Uncertainty, A New Simple Baseline. This work was done with my wonderful collaborators, my co-first author, Andreas Kirsch, Joost van Amersfoort, Philip Dorr, and Yaren Gal. Uncertainty quantification methods like deep ensembles or MC dropout, while effective at their job, are often very resource and compute intensive. This makes deploying them difficult for large-scale tasks like semantic segmentation. In this work, we present a very simple solution to quantifying epistemic and aleatoric uncertainty from a single deterministic model. To achieve this, we have two main requirements. First, we need a feature extractor, which is by Lipschitz constrained, that is sensitive and smooth, ensuring that feature space representations maintain some semblance of distance in input space. Second, with a constrained feature extractor, a density model as simple as Gaussian discriminant analysis can effectively quantify epistemic uncertainty. For a given input, we first check if the feature density is low or high to see if it is out of distribution or has high epistemic uncertainty. If the input is not out of distribution, we check the softmax entropy of the classifier to see if it has high aleatoric uncertainty. That is we are presenting understanding deep generative models with generalized empirical likelihoods, and the poster is going to be on Thursday night. So the quick one minute summary. We present here a new metric for the evaluation of deep generative models, which is based on the empirical likelihood. And from a practical perspective, this metric allows to identify specific de deficiencies in deep generative models of images. So for example, if the model is missing out on a certain number of modes, uh, the metric allows us to identify precisely which modes have been dropped. And another application is that we can identify which samples look least like the data distribution by using some per sample weights that the metrics provide us with. So what is the 